So there's no reason to punch meats. You are actually injuring yourself. My name is Raquel Harris, and I am a competitive fighter based in New York City. I currently hold five championship titles in Muay Thai and a gold medal in kickboxing for Team USA. Today, I'm gonna be showing you what they do right and what they do wrong in hand-to-hand -hand combat in some of the biggest TV shows and movies. Atomic Blonde. Okay, so when you see her lasso it around her opponent's head and flips him forward, that actually is inspired from a judo throw called Tomonagi. You want to make sure that you have control of your partner's wrist and the top of your partner's head. As you pull their weight down and sit to the ground, you're going to kick your leg forward, make sure your leg is locked in on their hips, and then you can toss them over you. She sold it. I mean, I recognized it. <laughs> Delta Force. So in Delta Force with Chuck Norris, we see a mixture of moves that are practical and moves that are made up for the movie. The moves that are practical was a judo throw that I noticed called Tsuyanagi. It's actually a one arm throw. And when you're throwing someone, you want to make sure that you're controlling their arms and hips. If you just grab someone's wrist, you're not going to generate enough momentum to throw them. So that right there was made up. Chuck Norris deserves a 10 anyway. He's actually a real martial artist. He's using a mixture of techniques from different styles, such as judo, karate, jujitsu, and wrestling. Good job. <laughs> Kickboxing. Yeah. John claude Van Dam. His form is good. <laughs> One thing I would recommend though when he's kicking the tree is to drop the opposite shoulder that he's kicking with. This way he gets more momentum from his hip. Also, I wouldn't recommend to actually kick a tree. This is great technique. Blocking with your palms is how you're supposed to do it in all across martial arts training. Even in boxing, you see that going on, but they don't actually extend their hands out all the way because you don't want to expose your face. It's better to just keep it short so that you can quickly, oh, I already have my hands by my face. Southpaw. I want you to switch and go southpaw. Let the foot move through with you. Same time, it's like it's connected by a string. Boom. Forrest Whitaker stopped Jake Gyllenhaal on the bag and he goes, yeah, so to throw a straight punch, you gotta throw it like, Ooh. but Forrest Whitaker didn't even throw it straight. <laughs> Why was his arm bent in a 90 degree angle? Ooh. He stopped the punch prematurely instead of going through the bag and getting a full extension. Shadow boxing is a great workout and you should not skip it if you have a fight coming up. When you're punching the bag or you're punching the pads, it gives you resistance. When you're punching the air, it has no resistance. So that's going to increase your speed because you can go as fast as you can. The fighter. You can usually tell when an actor just started boxing. If you watch Jake Gyllenhaal in Southpaw, he looks very stiff. But Mark Robert, he looks like a natural. The first trainer in the film looks great. His position on a pass is great, and the resistance that he's given Mark Robert is also nice. I can tell that this guy used to box himself. The second pad holder is Christian Bell from Batman, and he's not holding the pads correctly. You can see him throwing shots at Mark Wahlberg to dodge, but there's nothing to dodge because he's throwing it too high. Mark Wahlberg has his hands pretty low. And I know I always say, keep your hands up, but you can tell that in the scene, he has his hands low because he's trying to demonstrate his confidence and his dominance. You'll see that a lot in professional boxing. When fighters feel confident, they'll drop their hands lower. It's a good method to bait your opponent to come in. 
Miss Congeniality. Her confidence is 100% on, and I love how she just goes at it, but her technique is so off. I mean, she doesn't have her hands up. I'm not gonna parade around in a swimsuit like some airhead bimbo. Rule number one, keep your hands up. <laughs> these grappling scenes are horrific. Most of these techniques that are used from the film are inspired from actual jujitsu movements, but the technique is 100% off, and her partner is exaggerating. <laughs> She does not have control over him when she's pinning him down. In order for her to actually get control over him, she needs to sit her weight on his hips. The fact that he can move his hips around, it's easier for him to wiggle out or get out of the pin. Which part of that is supposed to shock me? Fast and Furious 7. Ronda Rousey and Michelle Rodriguez are doing these scenes in stilettos and dresses. How hard and cool is that? <laughs> Unlike other movies I saw where the fighting guard was kind of awkward or I didn't know what was going on, they actually have a realistic stance and I noticed a lot of these moves from Ronda Rousey's actual fights. Blind spot. Ronda Rousey did the same throw as Chuck Norris did in Delta Force, and guess who did it better? Ronda. <laughs> I like that in Blind Spot, they're highlighting Ronda Rousey's full throws. In Fast and Furious 7, they always clipped it. The Matrix. So these stances in that clip is completely ornamental. You actually don't want to stand in front of an opponent that way because you're going to take strikes straight down the middle. It's better to have a closed guard. A lot of the kicks I identify with, they're legit. I see roundhouse kicks, pressing kicks, spinning back kicks. The only kicks that are not legit is when they jump up in midair. With martial arts, we always want to stay grounded. The lower you are in your stance, the more power you can generate. Hung back. Tony Jaw and Umbag is amazing. The style that's used here is actually called Muay Baran, which is a parent version of Muay Thai. In Muay Baran, they train with their knuckles instead of their gloves. So it's more hardcore, and that's similar to traditional karate, where you train with your fists or bare knuckles. The techniques derived from Muay Baran are flying knees, which was very popular then, and elbows. Right now in fighting, elbows can be illegal dependent on the section of body or they'll make you wear pads. Because if you catch someone with an elbow, you're guaranteed to cut them. Rocky one. A plyometric exercise is when you're exploding off of the ground and landing back into that position. I definitely wouldn't recommend this for boxing training, we're already using our shoulders a lot and you don't want to do anything to add on more stress because it can lead to labrum tears or torn rotator cuff. Okay, so there's no reason to punch meats. You don't have to do this. You don't have to punch a wall. You are actually injuring yourself. You want to make sure that you have healthy bones. Do you? You want to help me out? Snake in the eagle's shadow. First of all, I would like to say that Jackie Chan does all his stunts, so let's give it up for him. There's a lot of equipment that you can use to practice inside fighting. 
also known as close range combat. I wouldn't recommend the rings, um, but what I like to do in the gym is we use a tire, put my lead foot inside the tire, my outside foot to the outside of it, and so does my opponent. Since we can't step our lead foot out of the tire, we have no choice but to practice sparring each other on the inside. Divergent. That technique that she's actually doing is very popular within like Kung Fu and Karate. It's called a hammer strike. <coughs> but it's illegal in boxing. She does need to use her whole body weight by shifting her hip into her hammer strike. You're never gonna win, not like that. I totally agree. <laughs> like, take it easy on you if you cry. They're both in an awkward fighting guard. You can't throw any punches from here. Like, if I was to extend from my elbow, I'm not gonna have as much power as if I'm extending from the shoulder. <laughs> when you're sparring, it's important to wear protective gear. If my teammates and I kill each other in sparring, then we won't be in great shape to fight, and we won't be great teammates. Girl fight. Her punches was way too wide when she was hitting the focus mitts, but that's actually not her fault. If you take a look at it, you'll see that it's the trainer's fault. He's actually holding the pads too wide. Whose face is that big? He should put the pads closer together and pretend that it's two sides of one face. That man begins. You can see him jumping from one post to the next pose to defend himself from all these attacks during his training. <laughs> you don't need to do that. I mean, Batman does. He's Batman. I'm Batman. Charlie's Angels. <laughs> None of these uh, moves actually um, comes from like any type of martial arts training. King Kong Palm. <laughs> One foot is going to the right, the other foot's going to the left. Like there's actually no way you can get like any power or momentum from that. And that's kicking your ass. The form for the moonwalk is off too. G.I. Jane. Her form is really great. The wider your stance is, the easier the push-up, and the more closed your stance is, the harder the push-up. Arrow. His form looks amazing on the salmon ladder. He's actually using his knees to get momentum for the next pull-up. Similar to a muscle-up, where you're creating a boost for yourself, almost as if you're pretending someone's helping you up. With all the guys working up top, you might want to think about a side entrance. Whoa. First of all, when you're doing a push-up, you want to make sure that your body lifts up at the same time your arm extends. And we don't see that here. G.I. Jane did a better push-up. <laughs> Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Yes, run! Yes! Uh, running with a weighted backpack is not a good idea. And in this scene, he's running with Yoda, and he's heavier than a backpack. Just me by my size, do you? It can lead to back pain. Mm. Million dollar baby. Let's see you. Let's see you. The speed bag is one of my favorite punching bags. You can use it to build muscular endurance in your shoulders. When you're practicing a technique, even when you're tired, you want to make sure that your form is correct. You can see her practicing her footwork, and a lot of people practice this um, to help with their timing. So what you want to do is, as you step with one foot, you want to land the punch on the speed bag. And I shift to my left foot, and I hit it with my right hand. If you land your foot before you land the punch, then you know your timing is off. Or if you land your punch first before you land your foot, then you know your timing is off. And you come over on my right foot. Haywire. <laughs> Gina Carano is a professional MMA fighter. She sweeps him into this beautiful arm bar that like, I am in love with. Ah! 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 
I love that she has a background in Muay Thai, just like me. She is one of the first females to popularize MMA. Although some of these TV shows and movies did a real good job with realism and technical choreography, I wouldn't get my training cues from entertainment. It's best to train with a professional if you want to get in the ring.